Let's jump over to uh, another story, which is in a similar vein. Oh. And we'll talk about propaganda. Check this out. This is Jesse Single. Uh, let's see. He's, he's a journalist. He's a good one. He writes. He's a, oh, I guess he's authoring now. Former New York mag and co-host of The Bar Pod. And he highlights this journalist, Zach Beauchamp, who tweeted this. I'm sorry, but quote, abolish the police seems like a poorly thought out idea that's gotten popular with shocking speed. Here, here. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. Yeah. It hey, poorly thought out does absolutely. I mean, we've talked about it a lot and I, man, I don't even think we've scratched the surface. Right. Of it. We've you entertained know, the, the intricacies possi- of what that means. Right. We've entertained the possibility of shifting responsibilities of police and shifting responsibilities onto local community watches and, and bolstering the Second Amendment to make it more personal responsibility as a possibility. Right. But I wouldn't begin to know what the result of that would be. It's just like. I, I, you know, I got to be honest, though. I think there is a good opportunity for figuring out if there's a way to reassess how our police departments function and we can create something potentially better. I don't know for sure, though, and I can tell you this. The reason why he's tweeting about this is that according to a poll, 90 percent of American people of color want more police. Wow. More, Seriously? More, 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 more. Look at this. Wow. wow. I was not expecting that. According to the Cato Institute, they say this. Nine in 10 black, white, Hispanic Americans all oppose reducing the number of police officers in their community. And okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got the numbers wrong. A third say they need more officers. Oh, okay. 90% say we're good where we're at. Yeah. And then a third of them say, no, we actually need more. Wow. None of them say reduce? None of, so I guess, what does that, what does that leave? Like less than 10%? Yeah. Holy cow. Yep. If 90% say we're good where we are, they oppose reducing. Right. That means you've got 10% that are in favor of reducing. Holy cow. The overwhelming majority is like, we're good. We'll keep it where we're at. And what happened to this guy when he tweeted this? They came for him. Oh, the, yes. the 9%, the 10%. The, the 9%. The people re And this is, dude, the Hidden Tribes More in Common study. I got to pull this up so we can cite it every time. Yeah, it's constant. Progressive activists make up 8% of this country, according to YouGov data. Wow. 8%. That's it. Can, the conservative wing makes up 25%. Isn't that crazy? The right wing of politically active people is 25%, and the left wing of politically active people is 8%. Wow. But they control our institutions. They have disproportionate power in media. And that's why you get this. This dude, Zach, I guess is a journalist. He said, talk to a number of people I respect about the framing of the original tweet, and I do feel like it was a mistake. It was far too dismissive. And then I ironically complained about condescending replies. We all send bad tweets sometimes. This was one of mine. Oh Bend gosh. the knee, but you it was spineless accurate. fool. Sure, it was an opinion, but it's it was Twitter. An, this, yeah. is, this is what's crazy. Right now in the New York Times, mm-hmm. right? This, this, is all, this is all looping together. The New York Times, the gray lady, the paper of record has fallen. Ugh. We've seen the assault on the gray lady to, sh- to, to turn it to SJW insanity. Yeah. And, it's, and there's been some bad moments. Now, that's it. Yeah. There was a revolt. 160 staffers were, were, you know, did a virtual walkout because Tom Cotton wrote an op-ed saying send in the troops. A position held by 58% of registered voters. Yeah. And sending in the National Guard by 71% of, na- of registered voters. Wow. So it's not... It's so not, everyone's in favor. Well, it's not, the, it's, not the, it's not all Americans. Right. A, a majority, but it seems. of the people who are politically active, it would seem they're mostly in favor of this. Hmm. And we even have uh, uh, this story right here. Where is it? Right here. A plurality of Democrats would support calling in the U.S. military to aid police during protests, poll shows. So now that we know that's true, you'd think these people would be like, perhaps we shouldn't get rid of the police because people actually like them. Yeah. Yet somehow, here is where we are, where this dude is apologizing for what he was correct about. Yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the craziness of the mob. So check this out. This guy, Connor uh, Fredersdorf, said, there is an ascendant pressure on journalists to reify positions that are held by a minority of the public and a super majority of journalists. If it succeeds, it will not advance social justice. It will make journalistic institutions that value social justice less influential. Hmm. Could you imagine what would happen if Joe Biden came out right now and says, Black Lives Matter is very important to me, which is why I'm announcing in my first 100 days, I will abolish all police departments. What do you think would happen? Uh, Trump would win. Trump could go to sleep <laughs> and just just play Xbox. And he, he, Trump could put a commercial and be like, 
Thank you, Joe. Uh, I'm going to play Xbox. We got the best games. I've got the new Call of Duty and just vote November and I'll see you then. <laughs> Call and then of he, Duty, really? And then he, yeah, Call of Duty. He goes golfing. Xbox? Xbox. Uh, I'm kidding. Oh, come on. If Joe Biden says this or in any way gets close to this position, Donald Trump will be like, for my next campaign move over the next six months, I will be golfing. I'll be That's putting it. my feet up on my desk. I'm going to be golfing. I'm going to hang out in Mar-a-Lago. I'm not going to do any work. Vote for that guy if you want to. Or vote for me. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and then he wins 530 electoral votes. Yeah. How, how, how man, the, the, uh, the, the propaganda coming from this weird school of thought thinks they're winning. They might. So, so uh, James Lindsay, who I'm referencing now for like the fourth time today. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because he's got these, these threads popping yeah, up on all great. of these issues that are prominent. And mm-hmm. he's a smart dude. He's a yeah. smart dude. Yeah. He said, basically what they do, they infiltrate an organization until they're, they have around 15% of it. Then they either manufacture or wait for some issue they can complain about and refuse to let it go until the company bends the knee. And they hope to either destroy it or completely take it over. Hmm. If they destroy it, good, it's gone. One of their opponents has been wiped out. If they take it over, now they can wield its, wield its influence. And then he said, the New York Times, he said something like this, the New York Times will be propped up with nonprofit money so that these activists can wear it like some kind of skin suit. It's like, oh, oh he's God. right, though. Oh, oh yeah. man. Now, this is what scares me, man. It's true. A lot of people have said that this woke SJW stuff would never leave certain smaller communities and college campuses. Now it's taking over the New York Times. We gotta, and it's been slowly doing it. We got to get out there and show people that be, having thick skin is important. You look know? at look at the yeah. First Amendment. It's like freedom of speech. It's like call me whatever. Doesn't matter. It's you not. It's not even about that. It's about political power. They're communists. Yeah, yeah you're right. I, I I hate I hate saying the communist word because it's kind of just like a weird cliche for leftists. You hear all the time. Yeah. But the the fringe activists that are pushing this stuff, they're literal communists. They they actually are revolutionary communi- communists, and they're looking to in create their version of a communist utopia. You know what really bothers me the most, the most offensive thing about them? What? Is when they tell me, don't you like Star Trek, man? We're trying to make a future like Star Trek. No one had to work and they had free food and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, how dare you? They had to work. What are you talking about? They didn't. Star Trek? Yeah. It's post-scarcity in Star Trek. Hmm. Yes, Star Trek, they have replicators. So people who who like uh, joined the Federation did things by choice because they wanted to do things and explore and, and, and be better at what they do. Okay. But yeah, replicators just made food. So they just do, they do whatever they want. We don't have replicators, man. We can't just do that. So these people are nuts. Yeah. Ultimately, I think they just want to end all of the good things that we've created. And I don't know why. Maybe it's like an equal and opposite reaction thing. We've had it too good for too long, and now the darkness is bubbling up. Yeah, that or, makes sense. Or maybe it's like the light can't exist without the dark, you know, and the light must defeat it. Or maybe sunset, sunrise. Maybe the golden age we had of, of liberty and freedom is sunsetting, and it can't go. It's a pendulum swing. It's a, it's it's a it's a revolution. It can't change. You know. No, I mean, it can't. I it can't just stay where it is. That. No. You th- no way. I don't, I don't think we can. We you know, we can just. You know the saying. You know, hard times make strong men. Strong men make good times. I'll say the whole thing. Good yep. times make weak men. Weak men make hard times. Yeah, it's it's accurate. That's the cycle. Yeah, hundred percent. I think so. So it's not so much that we won't come back, but that we're entering the dark times. No, but that's also what what how that doesn't make sense is because that's like a full cycle of everyone feeling the exact same way, and that is not the case. There's billions of us on this planet, and we have people that are refusing to to see people of color and and segregate it and be like yes we are different it's like no 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 we're all the same we gotta we aren't all weak and i'm not all of us you know are men you know whatever but it's it's about well, no, hum, you, you, the human you have, race you have it backwards what we actually so the the civic libertarianism and and you know um classical mm-hmm. liberalism types are saying we recognize that we're not all the same right but we must we must treat equal everyone equally under the law which is the equal uh, equal opportunity right. versus right. the and yet, equal outcome. We we know it's a class issue. There's a lot of issues out there, but a lot of it is is this class issue that we're stuck in, right? And so not all of us are going through hard times. But well, so but here, here's the reality, man. So people are in different stages of that that quote. You, you, so we got to bring everyone together to be strong and be able to handle but, everything. But but also keep in mind, you, you know some stupid people, right? Illogical, maybe, which. You know, not everyone. Well, I know can, some dumb people. 
Okay, like okay. Don't, like you, you you'd be like like low IQ. You mean yeah, All like right. in a un unable to actually function and do a job. Okay, these people are unlikely to become super wealthy. Okay, because they don't understand how to become super wealthy. So you're saying there will always be a class of people that are dumb. No, I think I'm saying there. Will, I think some people are dumb. Some people are smart. Humans have variability within their development. Okay, and I think also that there are just environmental factors we can't control, which will result in some people having certain abilities and some not. I'm not going to complain. The NBA is all a bunch of seven foot tall, you know, dudes. Okay. I'm, I'm not seven feet tall. I don't want to play in the NBA. I got no. I, it's not my dream, I guess. And if you really want to work hard for it, you can probably figure it out how to how to how to get there. Not everybody can. Okay. Not everybody can do every single job. So the fact is, these people believe that we're all the same, literally. Right. Men and women are the same. Everyone's the same. You know, there's, there's this criti 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 what, is it, what is it called, like a, a critical gender theory? That, yeah. that the only reason women are weaker than men is because they're trained from a young age not to engage in the same behaviors. Hmm. But if that women did sports, they'd be just as strong. And that's f not true. No, that's not. Right. So men, on average, will always have more muscle mass. And men, a female on average, will always have less muscle mass and more fat. And it's for different reasons. I suppose you can be one of these people that wants to uh, manufacture some kind of equality. But it can never be. It can never be. Imagine if we invented something that turned, that guaranteed, genetic engineering guaranteed everybody was the same hairless, olive skin colored type person. Men and women were of equal height and strength. Guess what? Women still have the babies. You know what that means? They have to dedicate time and energy to creating and, uh, and, and, and giving birth to that baby. Mm -hmm. And that means that even if it's only like, you know, that, that, that several days or whatever in which they're going to the hospital dealing with labor and, and, and giving birth, several days where they're not working, that will still confer an advantage to the males who can spend that time investing and working. Theoretically, you can, you can pass a law then where it's like the man must be in the hospital with the woman at all times and, tr and try and force humans to be the same. Mm. We're not robots, though. We're not the model, you know, A93 humanoid. <laughs> We're all individuals that develop with variability. That's true. And because of that, there's going to be class. So what do we want to do? We want to make sure that everybody has a chance, has the same chance as everybody else. Yeah. And that if you choose, you can succeed. Maybe you won't. You're not going to be Jeff Bezos, man. You know why? There's one. There's, there's how many billionaires, you know, soon to be trillionaires, like one or two. Yeah. Out of the billions, man, it's, it's not going to be you, you know? And it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It doesn't mean you're better or worse. It just means this is how life is. These people who are, are taking over the New York Times want to create a world where we're all gray blobs that are identical in every single way. It is not possible. True. And, and we're not. The, we're all different. Yep. If you zoom out far enough, we look the same. Yeah. The more you zoom in, the more unique we become. Well, mentally. Physically, we're all the same. Like, it, I mean, yeah, we, we differ, but we're, we're all, we all believe the same color. Right, That's right, right. really what I'm trying to say. We're all humans. Right, we're all humans. We all have the same base functions of what f makes us work. Brains, kidneys, hearts, livers. Yep. And the, the variability in intelligence. But this, so that my understanding of current biology and psychology is that the variability in intelligence and everything is actually relatively low. But don't you think that would, that would change? If we, if we really, I don't know the answers, but if we elevate everybody to a, a more of a base level... Not, I'm not saying get rid of capitalism or, you know, I don't, you know, but if we bring it up so that that, that baseline, the average is significantly higher. What's the average IQ? 100. 100 is the yeah. average IQ. That's what's what. It's so, a, yeah, right. So say we, we eliminate it and give everyone, everyone has that chance, right? To, to So 100 years go by. Don't you think the average IQ of, of humanity is going to be significantly higher? Well, so the way IQ works is it tracks the average. So 100 is baseline. Okay. So we do generally absorb more knowledge. But 145 is genius. Once you're past that, you're officially a genius. Your brain Relative works. Relative to everybody else. Functions. I thought it, it is literally 145. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think IQ is actually a really good uh, measure of how you're going to Okay. Function. I mean, it's, like, it, it's, it's an example of it. I understand the point though. you're making. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I do not think you can create a world where everyone starts. From, at, 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 there's, there's no way to create a world where the starting line is equal for every single person. Well, I'm not, I'm not even saying that it's going to be equal for everybody, you know, because families can, you know, travel their money down, yep. you know, whatever, uh, any of the different examples there. But if everyone has a chance, you know, if we get rid of the poor, you, you know, can't. 
I think I think there's I, I gotta believe that there's a, a poor a, pers- a poor person today uh-huh. is wealthier than John Rockefeller was 100 years ago. Okay. I mean, technically, it's not true, but the point is. No, it's definitely not true. No, but what I mean is, the average person is considered extreme poverty by today's standards. Okay. For the entire planet, like. Okay. We, we, the poor people in this country have air conditioning, have refrigerators. Refrigerator. Everyone's got flat screen TV and a cell phone. You can buy a cell phone for twenty bucks. Get a data plan, unlimited everything. Twenty bucks on T-Mobile. Okay. That that is wealth. That means somebody in a you know even in impoverished areas in in the middle of nowhere can look up how to farm. So poverty will always exist because poverty is relative. That's a good point. So you're always going to have look. I work every single day. And the, I only have two half days off where I only work a, a full shift in the morning. So I work a full shift. Then we do this show at night. Yeah. I don't have to. And other people choose not to. Because of that, I'm better off than they are. Because of that, my kids will have advantages. Yeah. Should we take away all of that extra money I've made by my choice? If you do that, then why would I bother doing this show? Well, I think even like say you know trump is bringing jobs back here where the factories are all returning people are going to lose their you know big huge profits because they're going to have to pay minimum minimum wage to their employees people are going to get much better jobs there's going to be a lot more jobs available if that's the case so then all of a sudden all these factories that we've lost now people can actually work so there's jobs everywhere all across the country yep so it's like that so it's like I want the people who are poor to have an opportunity to, right. to be able to have that those totally jobs. Get. You yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. Exactly. Like as I said, it's like I don't have the answer, but as long I want to find the answer. But, I want to move towards the answer instead of just everyone's just throwing insults at each other, blaming, right. blaming, and it's this blame game. No one so, wants to actually have a conversation about it, where to move forward. Yep. That's, it's it's really aggravating me. And you try and talk to them and they just get mad at you because they're looking for the other to They're attack. like, no, no, no. I don't want to figure this out. I just want to scream my ideology at you until you agree with me. If we bring back all these jobs God. to the United States and mm-hmm. reopen these factories, yeah. two things are going to happen. People in China are going to lose jobs because those are the jobs they used to have. Okay. And now they're going to become poorer. So you can say, I'm in favor of helping America first. And I get it. Some people argue it's better off helping these foreign countries to lift everybody up. And that means American sacrifice. I get the idea. The other thing that'll happen is the guy who started that factory to bring those jobs back will become rich. And you will always have the top tier and the bottom. Yeah. The communists want to get rid of all that, but they don't understand why that doesn't work. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want to catch the full show, tune into this channel, subscribe, hit the like button, or check us out on iTunes and Spotify. And we will soon have this podcast up for free on all podcast platforms. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all in the next episode.